says in verse number 13, Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. This happens repeatedly throughout the Gospels. You read, you know, they're always trying to catch him on the Sabbath day, and Jesus is just putting it right in their face and going, Oh, is it lawful to heal? I don't know. Here, stretch out your hand. And he's just healing people left and right. And just... Well, that wasn't, that wasn't very um, tactful, right? What are you trying to do, Jesus? Push these people away? These were bad people. Amen. Yeah. He's not trying to convince them of anything. He's actually just trying to shove it in their face and say, yeah, I am going to heal. Right. Because you guys are just completely wrong and I'm not going to take it lightly on you. I'm going to shove it right in your face that yes, it is lawful to heal. Luke chapter 13, we see another example of this. It says in verse number 14, turn if you would to Colossians chapter number 2. Luke 13 verse 14, the Bible says, And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall, and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound all these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? He's saying, you're going to feed a stick and bring an animal to water. An animal! Right. And this woman has been bound for years, for over a decade. And you're saying, just because it's a Sabbath, she shouldn't be healed? What's the matter with you people? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and rightfully so. And all the people rejoiced for the glorious things that were done by him. Yeah, they ought to be ashamed. And you know what? Sometimes in preaching, you ought to preach in a way that people ought to be ashamed of themselves when they've when they're got a wicked heart, when they're guilty of wicked things. And they're so focused on... on you know, in this case, just on the law that they just completely forget about people altogether and, and doing what's right. They just want to condemn. Colossians chapter 2. The reason why we're going to Colossians chapter 2 is as, as important as the Sabbath day is and has been in history and how seriously God has taken it, but it's okay to do right on the Sabbath days all throughout the Old Testament. That's always a way. Of, it's not just with Jesus that it was all right to do good on, on the Sabbath day. It always has been. Just like it's always been okay for the priests to, to perform their work on the Sabbath day. But in the New Testament, we don't have to observe the Sabbath day anymore. Sunday is not our Sabbath. Saturday is the Sabbath, but we don't have to observe it. Now, if you choose to take a day to devote to going to church and spending time with your family and not working, great. God bless you. I think that's a good idea to be able to have a day to relax. Nothing wrong with that at all. But don't Judaize the New Testament into trying to bring back the things which have been done away. The areas that Jesus has fulfilled. Just as much as we're not bringing back lamb sacrifices, we're not bringing back this observance of the Sabbath day either. Colossians chapter 2, look at verse number 13. The Bible says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore, that therefore... What's that referring to? What we just talked about. Jesus Christ paying for all of our sins. Amen. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon, look at this, or of the Sabbath days, Amen. which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. All of those things, it says, are a shadow of what's to come. It's foreshadowing. Here's what's going to happen. The Sabbath, what's that a foreshadowing of? Jesus Christ rest. The rest in Christ. The work that he did for us. 
while we rest in him. That's the foreshadowing. So he says, let no man judge you, therefore, in these things. If we're not going to let any man judge us, judge us for what? For not keeping the Sabbath day? What else is there? I mean, I mean, what else can you possibly be judged for on the Sabbath day? It's a real simple command. It's just you don't do any work. What else can you be judged for? Nothing. 